Hey everyone, Liz here. Um, sorry about this bad lighting. <laughs> it's not good. Um, but this is the best I can do. Um, because I'm not moving from where I am because I am fairly comfortable at the moment. Um, so I have my big update as I promised last week when I told you about my gastroparesis nightmare. Um, and my updates. Um. So last Friday, I went to see a dietitian uh, locally. My GP referred me. Luckily, she I didn't know there were different kinds of dietitian, but she was a gastro dietitian, which is always helpful because she knew what EDS was. She knew what gastroparesis was. Um, so that was a massive help. Um, she went through all my symptoms and all this kind of thing. Um, and basically what came out of it, I was there for an hour, was she definitely thinks I've also got IBS, which is really surprising because I know a lot of people who've been misdiagnosed with IBS um, and then gastroparesis, but she said it's possible to have both and she said that that's what I have. Um, she looked at my meal plan diary that I'd done for the last four days before. Um, he's supposed to do it for a week, but... I only got my appointment through on last Monday, so I only had um, four days, well, three and a half, four days for then. Um, but she was really shocked by lit literally what I'm eating, like, or not eating, rather. Um, she said, you're only having one or two small meals a day, which is true. Um, what I am eating has got no nutritional value, really, except for if I have scrambled eggs. Um that's also true, but I've literally tried everything. So she agreed I need some nutrition and said that I should be on the Fortisip um, range, so to speak. She wanted me to try the juices and the uh, shakes because they're lactose free. Um, but she was a bit worried because I have a dairy intolerance, well, lactose intolerance. And she was worried because there's cow's milk protein in uh, both Fortisips. Um, so she recommended that. <clears throat> she also said that it sounds like from my symptoms I have um a completely bad bacteria in my stomach all the good bacteria that you're supposed to have is gone for some reason um so she wanted me on a probiotic there's only two that are lactose free one is very expensive and one um I managed to find and I've ordered called BioClan or BioClan I can't remember BioClan remember um but it sounds like that anyway um amazon did have it for like 25 pound for 120 but i thought i don't want to get that many if it makes me worse i mean i'm sure it won't but so i managed to find on ebay the exact same product sold by a health food company um and i think it's to 60 capsules so that'll be two months worth um i think or well, is it two a day i don't know i um, can't remember uh, she wanted me to also try some ground linseed, I think she said. Was it linseed? Uh, I've got my notes here, I can tell you. Yeah, ground linseeds. Oh, I'm fairly sure I'm allergic to linseed oil, so that would be no. Um, and I'll continue on the low fog map, and I'm not drinking enough. That was basically it um so yeah she did say though that the fodmap thing has changed and there is a uh soya is one of the high fodmaps now um but i was like there's no way i cannot have soya i seem okay on soya and she said with most like special diets some people react to things some people don't i don't react to soya i literally wouldn't be eating anything at the moment because um i've just had another soya yogurt um out pro soya i don't know if anyone knows any brands in the uk that are soya free and lactose free <laughs> i don't think that exists but i'm just looking for a pamphlet because she also said um I, most of you who are on the low fob map might know about the monash university app which i i've had for years 
um that's an australian university that produced it it was like six pound or something now there's a new um uh british one done by king's college hospital um oh gosh you can't see that there we go um called Vodemat and it's on the app store it's on the google play store it's called um food maestro um i had real problems trying to find it so what i did was actually go to the website that's down there and um, that might be backwards but it's www.foodmaestro.me and follow the link to download the app um that's accessing on my phone and that's got all like British food, British measurements, things like that. Much better. And it's only, it's not free to download now. It's £4 a year. So I thought that'd be quite useful. Um, and then she said she'll find me for a phone appointment, follow-up consultation thing. Uh, oh, my cat's coming to say hello. <laughs> uh, on Friday, uh, this Friday. And then that was because I was going to see Professor Aziz on Saturday. Um, you gonna say hello? Say hello. Say hello to everybody. Yes, he's quite shy. <laughs> cuddle. Go cuddle. No, he's gonna drop. Oh, you can't see me. There we go. So anyway, um, and then I have a face to face follow up in October. But um, so I went to see Professor Aziz on Saturday. Just gone a couple of days ago, and it was the most overwhelmingly amazing appointment um he knows his stuff he's amazing i cried in the car when i got out of the clinic because just when you get told and i've had this before with like my pots diagnosis my fir first time i was diagnosed with gastroparesis um you know when you're told by so many doctors any doctors gp specialists that there's nothing wrong and you know there's something wrong and then someone goes within you know half an hour oh you've got this 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 and this this and this and these are the tests you need that's literally what it was um he 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 was amazing it's worth the 300 pound you only get kind of just over half an hour but you have to pre-fill in a questionnaire so he knows what meds you're on what procedures you've had for your stomach, what, um, right, why you're going there and all this. So you bypass all that. Um, and basically he thinks I've got overflow diarrhea. Um, so when the other doctor who was rubbish, Adam Brooks said, Oh, you're really lucky not to have constipation. He didn't know what he was talking about. I actually told professor is who I'm under and he said, Oh, he's a really good doctor. And I'm like, mm, well, he's just basically, I've ended up here because of him, because he's not believed me. Um, Professor Aziz thinks that my stomach is hurting and sore because there is some kind of maybe blockage in there where I'm getting constipated and um, all the, because I don't have anything other than diarrhea, like all, all the time, every bowel movement is diarrhea. Um, pardon me. Um, that well if you know if, just look it up over radar it's hard to explain but it's it's that he was really shocked i haven't had any scans or x-rays or anything like to diagnose it i had the first x-ray in a and &E a couple of months ago which showed a upper intestinal blockage but they said that that still would clear that and maybe it hasn't i don't know so he wants because he knows i was self-funding um he said he wants me to have it locally Fingers crossed my GP will either refer me somewhere to, or to a different doctor or once Dr. Well, I'll say it's Dr. Woodward um, at Adam Brooks um, sees the letter from Professor Aziz, which I will forward to him. He hopefully will um, be quite worried because that's like his superior and hopefully he will do the things that need doing ASAP. Because I need an x-ray on my stomach to see actually what's going on and if there's anything stuck in there. Um, I also need a colonoscopy to take biopsies from my stomach and my intestines. Because he said, why haven't they rolled out celiac and Crohn's? Because it could be either of those as well. He examined my stomach as well, which was the first time anyone's done that. Um, he also said that I, from what I was telling him, what I can and can't eat and my allergies... I definitely have mast cell activation disorder, which is such a relief because, as 
many of you know, if I think I did a video a few months ago, I went to see Dr. Grattan, I was told it was amazing with Marcel, he's a dermatologist and he basically, within my 10 minute appointment, which I waited three hours for, said, oh no, you don't have it, and literally just focused on my skin, which is what he's a doctor of, but he didn't, he just said no, and obviously that's on your records then, but Professor Aziz was like, yeah, you've definitely, from all your symptoms, have got Marcel. Uh, he also said I have a uh, histamine intolerance and wants me on a low histamine diet. Um, for me, I'm always wondering whether, I because I've not known this, because everyone's like, oh, you don't have any histamine issues and blah, blah, blah. And I've known I have, that I've been doing myself more damage by having these foods, that this is where I've got to. Because a lot of the stuff that are restricted, I know you don't have to cut them out completely, but some people... It's like with a FODMAP, some people find that they're okay with certain foods and others. But I've been eating things that I love that are on there that are restricted, like tuna, avocado, olives, breaded things. You know, I've been having like fish fingers when I felt hungry because that's the only thing I can seem to stomach. But then I've not got any better, so yeah. So anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the screen and not on the camera. Um, So I've got to be on a low histamine diet. And a low FODMAP diet. So I feel like at the moment, I... Um, should I take my glasses off? That's better. There you go. You don't get the glare of my glasses. Um, so I get... I'm just like absolutely like... Oh, just like, what am I going to eat? Like going out to eat at the moment is impossible because I can't stomach solid food. And when I eventually hopefully can, um, it's going to literally... I'm going to have to know every ingredient and stuff and the amount of times I've eaten out and said, you know, if there's a dish and I said, well, can you tell me what the ingredients are? And they go and check. And they go, oh, the chef who made it's not here today, so I can't be sure. Oh, I'm putting them back on. Stop putting them on. Um, uh, yeah, that they can't, I would never risk it. Like for me, like onion is the worst and garlic and things. And if there's a soup, nine times out of ten soup has onion in, whether it's, not the main ingredient uh, or it is whatever um so i'm kind of like oh i'm gonna have to cook a lot at home the only place i've actually been to so far that i found is actually really good is bella italia which surprised me because I, I haven't been there very much and there's one fairly near where i live um they now do a create your own pizza and you can actually do gluten-free base um you can then create your own toppings. You can either have the tomato or not. Any of the toppings, so you use your like sweet corn, chicken, mushrooms, pineapple, all that stuff. And you can have vegan cheese. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So at the time, I didn't know about the histamine issue. And tomato is obviously very high in histamine. So um, I had a gluten-free base, tomato um and vegan cheese and it tasted amazing i've never had vegan cheese like it usually vegan cheese is disgusting because it um doesn't melt very well and it doesn't taste very nice but it was really good uh but that was the day on the way home that i felt like i was giving birth because my stomach hurt so much so <laughs> it's because of the solidness of it i still can't i've tried i can't have solid food so anyway um so professor is basically has diagnosed marcel diagnosed uh histamine intolerance um has said i need x-ray and colonoscopy also he said and this is what makes me mad why gastroenterologists don't spot this is he looked at my meds and he was like why are you on a meprosol and i was like i've got gastroesophageal reflux disease and he's like well are you on any other like vitamins and i was like well i take magnesium and uh, Adcal, which is prescribed, um, but magnesium isn't. And he was like, why are you on magnesium? And I was like, because I've got low magnesium symptoms. I, I had seizures last year. It was terrible. And he said that omeprazole cause, causes low magnesium. <laughs> and I've been on it for about six years. So no wonder why. So he wants me to half that dose. He wants me also to, also to start on ranitidine, uh, which Dr. Gould has already asked for. He wants me to double my dose of fexofenadine, which is antihistamine which also Dr. Gould recommended, which was never done. Um, my doctor still hasn't put me back on my degree either, which is on my letter, but there you go. Um, so my GP is, is failed majorly, as well as this Dr. Woodward at Um 
So uh, the magnesium I'm on now is magnesium citrate tablets. He said they don't absorb very well, especially in my case, and especially in gastroparesis. So he's going to ask my GP to prescribe me a magnesium liquid um, substitute thing. He also said the Fortisip stuff that the dietitian has uh, recommended is no good for me because the gastro issues I'm having and she did actually mention another one and it's elemental 028 I think or something like that um it's on my notes here and he he highly he said you know don't even consider full to sip um it's called yeah elemental 028 extra so I need to be on that as well um so there was so much to take in for him to actually believe everything I was telling him to not question me he said oh you've lost a lot of weight in a short period of time not oh you need to lose more weight it's a great thing you're losing weight like the other doctor the other doctor literally I think he was having a bad day because he said all the wrong things like to say I was lucky not to have constipation which I do have constipation to say I was overthinking things when clearly the top neurogastroenterologist in the whole country agrees there's an issue and then to say he doesn't really know much about EDS and bowel issues and Professor Aziz says he does know a lot about it and all the people I know who see him say he's great I was just really don't know if he had an issue with me or something I don't know I don't really care anymore but um luckily all this information is going to be sent to my GP um and then I can forward it on to, to Adam Brooks as well and hopefully get all this sorted soon because Today, my lunch um, was disgusting. Um, I was hoping to have mashed potato, but it seems we have no potatoes left. Um, and I've just got yogurts in and soups, and I'm so bored of them. <laughs> um, I've not really lost any weight in the last two or three weeks, which is good. Um, I think it's because I've been trying to eat more. Um, but what I am eating, I've got diarrhoea, so I don't really know why I'm not losing weight. Because if I was a normal non-EDS non-ill person and I was literally having like one yogurt and some scrambled egg and that's all I had in a day my weight would be dropping like crazy but it's not so I'm slightly worried or confused I don't know I think both why that's happening um so yeah so that's it really so I I'm so frustrated it had to get to the stage we had to go privately again um, but Professor Aziz is amazing. He knows his stuff. Everyone trusts and respects him and listens to him. Um, it was actually really easy to get there. Um, we went on a Saturday and he has a Saturday clinic in his uh, physician's clinic in Devonshire Street, uh, which is just off Harley Street. Um, but given the fact I use a wheelchair, if anyone does go, I would highly recommend driving. It might sound scary, but if you have a sat nav, you should be okay. Um, you just go around like the north bit of London and then around Regent's Park and it's just south of Regent's Park. Um, but you can park right in the road. There's the parking bays are huge. They're very long. So you can I could have enough room to get the ramp and my chair out. Um, there is an NCP car park kind of nearby, I think, but it's only open in the week, not at the weekends. Um, and the, it was so empty when we went. We were shocked, I think, because the majority of the buildings in that street are medical places so not residential um and it was like four pound 90 and no four, four ninety four or four ninety an hour which i know is a lot but it's london i mean that's you know um and you can stay up to four hours and if you've got a blue badge you get an extra hour free so we just put three hours because on, on my letter it said <coughs> excuse me if he needs if you need tests you might be able to get them straight away but given that it was a Saturday the staff weren't in and he also didn't want me to have to for well, my parents to fork out for you know tests that can be done on the NHS which should have been done on the NHS already but yeah so we were way over so we sat in the car for a while and I pulled my eyes out because I was like so finally someone's listened um and he's also answered other questions I didn't even have going in there like the magnesium issues and the um ranitidine and all the allergy stuff and it was just absolutely crazy um so yeah highly recommended i don't know i think it says up to five days to get his letter through but being bank holiday yesterday um 
I should get it by the end of this week, hopefully. So fingers crossed next week I can get the ball rolling. And yeah, I'm just really, really hoping that these things that he wants to get done do get done because I'm getting really fed up now. So that's my update and I'll let you know when I get any more news. Bye. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned and click the picture of me on the screen right now and you can subscribe to my channel. Please like the video and click the bell notification if you want to know when my next videos are put onto YouTube. Um, there should be a box on the screen where you can see other videos I've done. Happy watching!